I think today was a very important day in the markets, and I think there's a good chance that we're going to begin the next leg down in the U.S. dollar, the next leg up in gold, and also experience a bear market rally in the U.S. stock market that could take us through the end of the year. We may end up getting that proverbial Santa Claus rally after all, and it may spark a lot of false optimism for that bull trend to continue in 2023. But I think investors are going to end up being substantially disappointed. The rally that we're likely to have in December, it's not just a Santa Claus rally, it's a sucker's rally. And the Grinch may not steal the bull market before Christmas, but I think he will make his appearance early in the new year. And my expectation is that the U.S. stock market will make new lows in 2023 after we get a year-end rally in 2022. But I think as 2023 begins to play out, it's not going to look like investors expect. Because what I think sparked the rally in stocks and, of course, the rally in gold and the sell-off in the dollar was the reaction to Jerome Powell's highly anticipated speech. And not only did he talk, he also sat down and took some Q&A. Powell said that everybody kept expecting things to go back to the way they were, meaning low inflation. The Fed had low inflation for many years. In fact, the Fed thought the problem was not enough inflation, which of course is a good problem to have because it gives the Fed the excuse to create even more. But we don't have that problem anymore as if that was a problem. Now we have a real problem of too much inflation and there's nothing that the Fed could really do about it. And also part of the reason that inflation wasn't a problem was because we lied about it because we were relying on government manufactured metrics for calculating the effects of inflation, price increases. Those government measures, the official way that we look at consumer prices, as I've been saying, were designed to mask the degree to which inflation was causing prices to go up. And so that lulled the Fed and other central banks who have similar issues into a false sense of complacency that they could keep on creating inflation without that inflation showing up at the supermarket. Instead, it showed up in the stock market where everybody liked it. Well, now it is in the supermarket and pretty much in every market on Main Street. It's not just on Wall Street, and this is going to be a big problem. But what I thought was so significant about the speech and the Q&A that followed is the way the market reacted to it because Powell spoke as hawkishly as I've ever heard him talk. If you listen to that talk and then you listen to the Q&A, Powell admitted that inflation was still much higher than the Fed anticipated, stubbornly high, and that the Fed was committed to doing whatever it takes to bring inflation back down to 2% and that it's going to take a lot more than the Fed thought. In fact, Powell went on to say that he didn't believe a lot of the private sector forecasts that were predicting a decline in inflation. He just said he didn't believe them. And he acknowledged that prior forecasts had predicted a decline in inflation and that those prior forecasts were wrong. And so he didn't think the current forecasts would fare any better. Powell seems to be perplexed that we're not going back to the good old days where you printed a lot of money, yet consumer prices didn't go up. During those days, you printed a lot of money and stock prices went up, real estate prices went up. Well, now the inflation has moved from assets to consumer goods, and that is where it's going to stay. It's not gonna go back to another bubble. Inflation has now taken hold in the real economy, and this is just the beginning of a long overdue rotation out of financial assets into real goods. It's just that Powell doesn't understand this yet because I don't think Powell or any of his comrades over at the FOMC really understand inflation and why it was apparently so low for so long. Despite all the quantitative easing, they don't get the fact that they got lucky and they pressed their luck with multiple rounds 
of quantitative easing. In fact, I think the problem is already manifesting itself on Main Street this Christmas shopping season. I think the sales that we had on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, while they're talking about record sales, these record sales are not adjusted for inflation. If you do adjust for inflation, it's a decline. But I think the decline is going to get worse as the shopping season unfolds between now and Christmas Eve or whatever it ends. And I think it's going to be a very disappointing shopping season. But I think Main Street's pain could turn into Wall Street's gain, at least between now and the end of the year, as investors start anticipating the pivot. Now, what this is telling me is that the markets are no longer buying what Powell is trying to sell. The markets get that this tough talk is all bark and no bite. Because again, Powell continues to speak about a soft landing. He is still oblivious to the fact that there is no soft landing. It's not even a landing at all. It's going to be a crash. And I believe his resolve to fight inflation is only as strong as the economy. Yes, he will tolerate a soft landing. In his words, that means an increase in unemployment that's not that big. And maybe we have some weakness in the economy, but not a severe recession. So as long as we don't have a big rise in unemployment or a severe recession, he's determined to bring down inflation. Except there's no way Powell could succeed with bringing down inflation without causing a massive recession. In fact, not just a recession, but a financial crisis and a surge in unemployment. Now, it's not because high unemployment is necessary to bring down inflation. It's just that what you have to do to bring down inflation today would cause a huge spike in unemployment and a crash in the economy because the phony recovery that the U.S. has experienced has all been because of inflation. It's been built on the foundation of inflation. So when you fight inflation, you actually smash that foundation and everything comes crashing down. Had we had a legitimate recovery, we would not be in this predicament. But when you bet the entire economy on inflation, when you have an economy that lives by inflation, then it dies by inflation. And that is what would happen if the Fed actually did what it's going to take to reduce inflation. Because it's not just much higher interest rates, but we need to see a big decline in consumer spending. We need to see a big decline in borrowing to finance spending, and not just on the consumer level, but on the government level. In fact, especially on the government level, we need to see big cuts in government spending. And that's not going to happen. Government spending is increasing and we're borrowing more money to pay for it. So inflation's not going anywhere but up. But I think the markets now realize that the Fed is just talking 